Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today I'm going to show you how to check a single phase compressor to check for resistance measured in ohms or to check for any shorts or grounds. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumperman Tech. We're going to begin today's lesson by checking this single phase compressor for resistance and resistance is measured in ohms. Here is a close-up look at our compressor terminals, and this is where we would be checking for resistance. Before we can begin checking for resistance, it's important to understand what we're actually checking and what we're looking for. So therefore, I'm going to start this demonstration on a piece of paper so it's clearer to understand. Just a quick note, while performing any of these tests, make sure that your power is off, safety first, and even though the wires are disconnected off the terminals, just remember, make sure that power is off. Before we can check this compressor physically, let's go over some theory. So here, those three circles represent our three terminals on the compressor. We have a common terminal, a start terminal, and a run terminal. We're going to take our multimeter and set it to resistance, which is measured in ohms. From there, we can check any two terminals out of the three at a time. So let's start with these two. We're going to put one terminal on common and one terminal on start. Let's say we got a resistance of 3 ohms. After the 3, that is the symbol for ohms. That's cool. Moving on. Next, we can check our next two and let's say we check across our common and run terminal. Let's say our meter read 2 ohms. Alright, we're going to move on. And then we're going to check our last two pairs, which is between start and run. When we checked across start and run, we got a resistance of 5 ohms. In this exact situation, this would be a perfect scenario. What I love about science is that the theory always remains. So as we can see, between common and run, we have 2 ohms, and that's always going to be your lowest resistance reading. Next, between common and start, we have 3 ohms, and that's going to be your next highest resistance reading. If we look across start and run, we have 5 ohms, and that is always going to be your highest of all three resistance readings. So the question is, what are we even reading here, and how do we know this is actually good? So the idea here is that you're reading between common and start, and your reading between common and run, add it up, is always going to add to the resistance between start and run. So between common and start, we have 3 ohms. Common and run, we have 2 ohms. 3 plus 2 is 5 ohms, and that should be the resistance reading between start and run. And here you can see we have 5. In this case, this is a good compressor and the windings are good. So that's what we're looking for. We're going to add the two lowest resistance readings and when we add them up it should equal to the highest resistance reading that you get. That's how you properly check. With that being said, we can lace up our boots and get in the field to check a real single phase compressor. Today I'm using the Fluke 902 FC HVAC clamp meter. We're going to set our meter to ohms. If so far you are finding this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week and let's continue. Now we are set to resistance which is measured in ohms and that is this symbol right here. At the same time my meter reads continuity which gives you an audible sound and that is this symbol right here. Alright, so we're going to start with our top terminal here, which is the common, and then our right terminal, which is our run. We have 1.2, 1.3 ohms. Okay, next we can continue and check across the common and start. So here is our common, oops, let's turn that light back on, and our start. So we have 6, 6 6.1 ohms, okay? And to determine if this compressor is good, 
between these two terminals, which is the start and run, which once again I told you is going to be the highest of the readings, we should be getting around 7 ohms. So right there we have 7.1 ohms, 7 ohms. This compressor is good. So let's go over what actually happened here. So between common and run, we had 1.2 ohms. Between common and start, we had 6.1 ohms. If you add those two values together, we have 7.3 ohms. So the value of these two readings should be the value of the reading between start and run. So between start and run, we actually got, it started off with 7.3, then it went down to 7.2, 0 0.1, to, and 7 ohms. So in that sense, it's very close, and that I can determine is a good compressor. You're not going to get the perfect numbers, this is not a perfect world, and that's just really what it is. This checks out internally as far as resistance. Next, let's dive in a little deeper into diagnosing. So with what we checked, we were checking for open windings or closed windings. So since we had that good resistance readings, our windings were closed, and then the two values added up to the highest value, that's how we know this compressor is good internally. But let's say we had a different scenario. So let's say we checked between common and run, and we would get this symbol here, OL. That means you have an open winding and then your compressor is no good in that sense. Okay, let's say we check between here, uh, which is common and start. We had a resistance reading and then we, ha and we check between here and here, which is start and run. We had a resistance reading. We can determine that we have an open run winding. An open run winding would be an indication that your compressor is bad. Or if you check between common and start and you had this same reading, then you could determine that your start winding is open and once again, your compressor is bad. Now we could actually dive in a step further. So just because we checked between, let's say our common and our run and we got OL or our common and our start and we got OL, that doesn't exactly mean that a compressor is bad 100%. So there's these things called thermal overloads. Some might come outside of your compressor and some of them are built internally. So you won't actually see it. So it's important to know the model of compressor that you're using, but it's important to check to see, is your compressor hot? You can take a laser thermometer or just put your hand on it if that compressor is super hot to the touch and you're getting open line readings, you might want that to cool off before you fully give the customer the answer if the compressor is fully bad because once that compressor cools down, then you're going to get your resistance reading between common and run or common and start. And a good way to know that you might be off on thermal overload is that you won't get any reading between common and run, you will get this OLA OL. Uh, between common and start, you'll also get OL, but you might ha have the resistance reading between start and run. So make sure the compressor is not super hot and it had its time to cool down before you really give the customer the answer that their compressor is bad. Because there's times that guys came to the job and they determined the compressor is bad and they called me for a second opinion. By the time I got there, the overload closed, and I got the reading and I told them that their compressor was good. And just because the last person said it was bad doesn't mean that they were lying, but it really looks bad. They might have got that OL reading and they said, hey man, this thing is bad, but it really wasn't. So it's always important to really dive in deep when doing something like this and I always recommend calling a professional. If you ever came across a component that looks like this, this is your external overload. This would be mounted against the compressor right there by the winding, somewhere right there, and this is always gonna be connected to your common terminal. So, of course, the internal ones, we don't know what they look like. They are built inside. And if we look at the bottom, 
we have an element over here that measures temperature. If the compressor gets too hot, it's going to open the windings to protect your compressor. Once again, we can move on and now we can check for any shorts or grounds. So we're going to take our meter and go back to this setting here. Ohms, continuity. From my specific meter, it reads continuity at the same time it reads ohms. For your meter, most likely, it's going to be separate for each. For this demonstration, since my meter reads continuity with the audible sound at the same time it reads the resistance, you'll be able to check for any shorts or grounds using either one of these methods. You could either check with continuity where you just listen to the sound, or you could also check with ohms where we're going to look at the values. For this test, we're going to have always one lead on one terminal, and then your other lead is going to go to a ground, and I like to go to the copper that is connected to the system. To get a better reading, you might want to sand down the copper for a more accurate reading, but regardless, this is what you're going to be looking for. So here, uh, you can see we have no continuity, we don't have any audible sound, and we have an OL reading, we have an open line. That is actually what you're looking for. You do not want an audible sound. If you did have an audible sound, you're grounded. So here, let's start with our start terminal. So between start and copper, which is our ground, we do not have an audible sound and we have an OL reading. That is good. Between the common and ground, we have an OL reading and no audible sound. That is good. Between our last terminal and ground, we do not have an audible sound and we have an OL reading. That is good. If we went from any of these terminals to ground, and we had an audible sound, that means you're grounded. If you're grounded, then of course you have a bad compressor. So we're looking for no sound and we're looking for that open line reading when checking from one terminal to ground. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time.